If you want a hand navigating the crazy fixture schedule, I'd recommend you take a few seconds to subscribe to the Lazy FPL newsletter. They'll email you with a three-minute cheat sheet 24 hours before every deadline, packed with everything you need to know. It's totally free and a great way to stay on top of the blanks and doubles. Join 17,000 other managers and sign up for free via the link in the description. Game week 26 could not have gone much worse for those of us who played the wild card. A lowly score of 39 points has seen yet another red arrow down to 293k. Let's start in defence, where a swap from rotation risk Ben White to the more secure Gabriel backfired when the former came off the bench to score his first ever Premier League goal. Bournemouth led at the Emirates after just 9 seconds and recorded the 8th highest expected goals total during the game. Having contributed to a team leading 44% of Brighton goals since the World Cup ahead of Game Week 26, Solly March failed to score or assist in their 4-0 win over West Ham. Opting to field the Seagulls number 9 ahead of Karu Mitoma ensured no returns across the midfield. A decision made all the more frustrating by Mohamed Salah's 21-point score against Man United and Andreas Pereira's brace of assists against Brentford. The Brazilian would have subbed on to replace Riyad Mahrez in the pre-wildcard team. Ivan Tony's goal wasn't much cause for celebration, since the Brentford striker would have inevitably replaced injury doubt Eddie Nketiah with a free transfer had the wildcard not been used. Losing Darwin Nunez in favour of Harry Kane added to the immense misfortune. When things go as badly wrong as this wildcard, it's important to separate the decision making process from the outcome. It's ended horribly, but for a team with no Brighton or Brentford players carrying rotation risks Ben White and Riyad Mahrez and missing Bakayo Saka, I completely stand by the decision. Especially after those midweek FA Cup results, which made Harry Kane a more appealing prospect with a fixture in game with 28, and reduced the incentive to hold the wildcard with fewer doubles to be expected later on. I don't think anyone could have seen that Liverpool result coming, which is ultimately where wildcard teams lost out. But these are the kind of swings we play FPL for. For those of you on the right side of it, soak it up, enjoy it, and for the rest of us, let's cross our fingers for a better Game Week 27. As terrible as the score was in Game Week 26, I'm actually very happy with how the squad looks for the weeks ahead. I've got my eye on Ollie Watkins and James Madison as future transfer targets, but my plan is to roll the free transfer this game week. And here's how the team is set to line up. Brentford's double game week calls for David Raya between the sticks. The Beasts have conceded just seven goals since the World Cup break, with only Newcastle shipping fewer. They've conceded 0.95 expected goals per game. Only Man City and Chelsea have fared better. Rico Henry has recorded three big chance involvements in his last four matches, most recently being denied an assist by Brian Mbomo's miss against Fulham last game week. Everton have scored four goals in six matches under Sean Dyche, ranking 15th. Southampton have notched three goals in their last six matches, with only Chelsea scoring fewer. No defender has amassed as many assists as Purvis Estepinian in the last six game weeks, with three. The Brighton left back has fashion nine attempted assists in that time, trailing only Zinchenko, Alexander Arnold, and Trippier. Crystal Palace have scored two goals in their last four matches, with only Leeds managing fewer. Kieran Trippier ranks joint top with Bruno Fernandes for big chances created at home since the game week 17 restart, with seven in four matches. Wolves have fashioned four big chances in their last four matches. Only Southampton, Nottingham Forest and Leeds have fared worse. After last week's benching fiasco, there's a place for both Brighton midfielders in double game week 27. Kaoru Mitoma and Solly March have each returned five goals and two assists in nine matches post-World Cup. Mitoma has been afforded a team leading six big chances in that time, compared to five for McAllister and four for March. But March has created a further nine big chances, compared to just one apiece for the other pair. Marcus Rashford has bagged seven goals and two assists in six home matches since the World Cup. He's produced league-leading tallies of 20 shots in the box and 12 shots on target in that time. Southampton have failed to keep a clean sheet against the current top six teams this season, averaging 2.8 goals conceded per game. Only Bournemouth have fared worse. Bakayo Saka has been directly involved in nine goals across 12 appearances since the restart. Only Erling Haaland and Marcus Rashford have amassed more than his 73 FPL points. Fulham have faced 11 big chances in their last four matches, with only Aston Villa and Nottingham Forest allowing more. 
Erling Haaland has supplied two goals and two assists across the last four game weeks, with no forward earning as many as his 26 FPL points. Nine players have fired more than his 11 shots, but his 3.02 expected goals remains a league leading total. Crystal Palace have conceded just two goals in their last four home matches, but they've allowed 11 big chances. Only Arsenal and Aston Villa have fared worse in that respect. With six goals and three assists in 11 matches since the game week 17 restart, Harry Kane ranks second to the Norwegian for points among forwards. He's fired a leading tally of 37 shots in that time, with only Haaland and Darwin Nunez landing more on target. Spurs have won each of their last three home matches, scoring five goals without reply. Nottingham Forest have conceded a league-high 15 goals across their last six away matches. Brighton midfielders March and Mitoma come into contention for captaincy. The Seagulls have scored a league-high average of 2.2 goals per game since the World Cup and trail only Man City for big chances and expected goals per game. But having avoided a yellow card against Fulham on Monday night, Ivan Toney is my preferred choice. With 7 goals in 10 away matches this season, the Brentford forward has averaged 6 points per game. Only Erling Haaland can improve on his 9.5 expected goal involvement figure on the road. Everton have shipped 10 goals across their last 6 home matches, with only Southampton, Bournemouth and Aston Villa conceding more. 